MG Motors has a knack for offering cars that have a first in segment tag to it. Be it the Hector, the Gloucester or the quirky little Comet for that matter of fact. This year is the latest addition to that portfolio and it offers something very different from what we've seen before. Meet the new MG Winter EV. Better known as the Wuling Cloud EV in other Southeast Asian markets, MG Motors has bought this new new energy vehicle to the Indian markets and it says that it will disrupt the entire competition at this price point with one very key offering and that is its battery pack. Now before I tell you more about this battery pack, let's quickly talk about the design because let's face it, MG does not do ordinary. So just like the Comet, you don't get a very big bonnet up front and you get this LED DRL up here and the actual headlamp housing is in the lower bumper. Now this area kind of makes me feel like someone from the Citroen Design Studio had their way with this. But nevertheless, the car looks different from every single angle like in profile, it looks like a minivan and it's got a wheelbase of about 2.7 meters to show for it. Now personally, these 18-inch 5-spoke alloys, while they are designed for aerodynamic efficiency, I think they look super neat and give the car a very posh personality. Now moving over to the rear, you get quite a decent view with this light bar flowing across and Windsor written in bold to remind you that this car is just as royal as the Windsor Castle in England. Yes, that is me doing my best British accent, but let's get on with this video. Now let's talk about this battery pack. Now there's just one 38 kilowatt hour battery pack on offer and MG claims it has a range of about 331 kilometers. But there's a catch. Now while you can buy this car for a relatively affordable price of 9.99 lakh rupees ex showroom, you will only be able to rent the battery pack. You will be paying MG Motors 3.5 rupees for every kilometer that you drive and this is part of MG's new subscription based model. Now let us know in the comment section what do you think of this and while I have been stupid enough to sit in this boot and tell you that, let's talk about the boot space as well. Now you get a pretty nice boot space, relatively large, it's about 604 litres and that includes this under storage as well because you don't get a spare tyre here. Now if that's still not good enough for you, you can still fold down those 60-40 split rear seats for more space. Now let's get on the inside. Now at the time of shooting, MG hasn't revealed the prices of the top end Essence variant which is what we have here. But even then, this is quite a lavish cabin. You get some soft touch materials, but most of everything used around is plastic, but it is expensive. It feels very expensive. Like even these gold elements around the cabin, it really complements this all black cabin, especially the ones around the speaker grill. Now in terms of storage, you get quite a bit of storage here. There's some here. You even get some cup holders. And my favorite cup holder though is here, which you can use to keep your coffee or water or in the case of my unhealthy lifestyle, a pack of Pringles. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the literal elephant in the room. So everything is buried into this 15.6 inch touch screen. And you can clearly see that MG has put a lot of effort into it. The Hector's touchscreen, it lagged a little bit, it wasn't the best, but that's not the case here. This new one here in the Windsor is quite slick, it's fast, it responds to every touch and I personally quite like it. My only complaint would be that it's probably a little confusing to use on the go, but at least the AC control sits separately here. The Windsor is offered in four shades, turquoise green, pearl white, clay beige and starburst black. The features list is also quite stacked with LED headlamps and tail lamps, flush door handles, a 60-40 rear seat split, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, cruise control, 6 airbags, TPMS and a whole lot more are all standard. You will have to step up to the higher variants if you prefer the 18-inch alloys, leatherette seats, the 15.6-inch touchscreen, a wireless charger, a 360-degree camera, ambient lighting, the Infinity 9 speaker audio system, the massive glass roof and a 7.4 kWh AC charger. So immediately, the first thing that you notice when you get inside is that there is no push button anywhere. All you have to do is fasten your seat belt that disengages the electronic handbrake, tap the brake, go into drive and tap the accelerator and that's how you get going. So that front mounted electric motor in the Windsor EV produces a mere 136 PS and 200 Nm of torque. 
so heading into it we did not expect too much on the performance front at all the accelerator pedal isn't quite sensitive so you would have to tap it a little harder than you would as compared to any other evs that you have driven now in terms of that performance uh, there isn't much in the lower end so you would have to get slightly into the higher speeds to feel more of that 200 newton meters now in terms of visibility this massive glass house is brilliant in that aspect the a pillar isn't too big the windscreen is massive and along with these huge windows they're all quite a sight to take in now this instrument cluster is actually quite tiny i say tiny because it's even smaller than the one you get in the comet ev and while it does show more than enough information my only issue with it is the charge percentage mg does this with all the other evs where the battery percentage is a small graphic in the corner of the screen when i actually want it to be a little more visible now the mg winter ev is marketed as a business class cuv and the ride quality does hold up to that status getting over potholes it does it quite easily there aren't too many jitters that go around the cabin and even taking on speed breakers for that matter of fact the car doesn't hesitate in any aspect you kind of get the idea why it's called the cloud ev in other countries it feels just as so now we've not been the biggest fan of the hector slightly bouncy ride quality on the highways but in the winter it's actually not that bad yes you do hear a little bit of the road noise but uh, I don't think that's something we would hold up against it. The Windsor handles pretty well too. It's no sports car, but keeping its shape in mind, it does a good job. Something that surprised me was the very minimal amount of body roll. The car stays planted on the ground provided you're moving at moderate speeds. Go faster and you will most definitely see yourself off the road. Now you may have noticed that I haven't spoken about the Windsor EV's rear seats at all. Now like I told you the Windsor EV is marketed as a business class CUV. Now business class is supposed to cater to people who are slightly above average height as well. Now while I am almost 6 foot tall, we thought of getting somebody taller. So here's Kranti Sambhav to tell you more about the rear seats of the Windsor EV. Thanks Ken after a really long time I'm uh, you know thinking of agreeing with the marketing tagline any manufacturer has given and uh, MG is calling this a business class uh, kind of seat and this actually feels like that because uh, look at the uh, knee room i'm almost 60 uh, the kind of flex space i get is uh, really good in this segment and then the floor is uh, totally flat the cushioning is pretty firm this feels like a very soft uh, comfortable couch but uh, this is uh, still firm and i think for long distance uh, travel this so uh, would give you a comfortable uh, ride quality then the trump card of uh, this seating is the kind of recline i'm getting almost 135 degree of recline and this is how you can chill or just rest on a long long journey and as you mentioned this side is not average indian height and still i would like to mention that uh, the headroom could be a bit Uh, for challenge in case you are as tall as me otherwise this is actually a business class kind of seat so what's our final take on the winter ev we think for the price it's a big deal it might end up competing with cars like the nexon ev and xuv 400 but it offers space and quality of a car in a segment higher it's only the battery part that keeps us on the edge because ownership here does not mean full ownership the subscription based system is a bit too complex to understand but if you are willing to overlook that aspect then we think you've met your match <laughs>